So Apple have just wrapped up with their spring announcement and oh boy, was there a lot of stuff to get through. So buckle your seatbelts, make sure you hit subscribe and let's just get cracking on with the video and we'll cover off some of the things that Apple have covered today. So there was a, a lot announced and most of it was stuff that we already expected and there were some really amazing things there and there were some things that were a little bit lackluster and a bit of a letdown. So there were some nifty introductions with things like Apple Card, getting Apple Card Family, which basically lets you set spending limits for different people within your family group and also share things like credit line as well so not just the one person benefiting from that increased credit as you know they're spending on there there's also an update to podcasts as well which was very much expected so apple did a big redesign to the podcasting app so you'll be able to see different things like podcast channels there will be a new podcast page as well we'll be able to see different options for shows different options for series and different options for the different creators as well and as expected we are going to be seeing a subscription model coming live as well so that'll be starting up in the very near future. And this is basically gonna give people the option to support their favorite creators. So if you do have a creator out there that you absolutely love their podcast, you'll be able to see things like early access and behind the scenes and stuff like that by subscribing to their channel. So that'll be interesting to see what that looks like when it lands. But let's get cracking with the hardware because that is the real fun stuff. So interestingly, we get a new color for the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 mini, which is a new purple color. So for all of you fans out there who just like something a little bit more colorful, that's a little bit different, there's a new color available. So that was relatively interesting, but it certainly wasn't the standout. Finally, AirTags are here. Finally, you know, these have been rumored for years and years and every single event, they seem to get skipped over. But no, they are finally here and they are real. Now, AirTags are basically a little circular tag that allow users to link this in with your Find My app. So for example, you could take one of those tags and you could pop it into a bag, into your purse, into something that your kids are carrying around, for example. And if that were to go missing, you can then use the Find My app to find it. Now, if you have a device that supports the U1 chip, basically it allows you to use a really, really precise directions so it'll point you in the right direction if you're in your home and stuff like that rather than just showing it as a drops tag on a map if you're in your house for example and you're looking around for it your iPhone will literally point you in the direction of where that lost item is so it is really, really precise and will just help you to, I guess, cut down on some of that stress when you lose things. You'll have the ability to personalize these as well. So there'll be different engravings available and you can get things like emojis put on there if, you know, that's your jam. And also as well, there are gonna be a whole load of Apple designed accessories that you'll be able to pick up with these just to make them basically your own style and really fit in with whatever you're matching them up with. Apple talked a lot about privacy as they normally do and the fact that there are gonna be all sorts of privacy and security options built into these and the way you set them up. The only person who's gonna be able to find these and basically use them is gonna be you. It's not gonna be something that transmits to Apple to show the location of all your different devices and show the locations of all the things you've tagged them with and there are gonna be privacy settings on there as well to help prevent anybody, you know, just being a bit sneaky and trying to track somebody else. So there'll be some security stuff built in there to help prevent that. So pretty interesting to know. Obviously coming to the price point because that's the thing that you're all gonna be interested in. And surprisingly, these start at a really reasonable $29 per AirTag. You can also pick up a four pack for $99. So all in all, it's a really, really good proposition and definitely offers a lot of value. So we'll be very intrigued to get our hands on those, test them out and see what they're like. You'll be able to order these in April 30th and they should be landing in the second half of May. So mystical AirTags are finally here, but moving on to the next bit of hardware that Apple announced and that is Apple TV 4K. So we are seeing a new version of this and that will be launching in the same time period as AirTags. The new Apple TV 4K will support an A12 Bionic processor, so it's not going quite all guns blazing like a lot of us did expect. We kind of hoped that we would see a just a media version of this coming out and a gaming version of this coming out with like an A14 processor or something like that. Unfortunately, we are not getting that. So we're just getting the one unit which can be shipping with the A12 Bionic processor. So all of you people out there who are hoping for an Apple type console to really start to break into the gaming market, alas, that is not happening, unfortunately. However, one big thing that everybody is absolutely going to love is they have finally redesigned the remote. That was one of the things that so many people seem to complain about. It was just not nice to use. It was unergonomic. Well, this time it has physical buttons on there. Siri button has been moved onto the side as well to help prevent from you know unnecessary access to Siri. And there is now a little kind of haptic toggle around it, very reminiscent of an iPod. Back to the Apple TV itself, it now supports HDR high frame rate, which is really good for things like sports. 
Also, they have upgraded AirPlay as well, so if you're shooting anything in HDR on your iPhone, using the high frame rate, you'll be able to stream that across to your Apple TV, again, allowing you to see your movies in a much brighter and more vivid color. A new feature coming to the Apple TV is something called Color Balance, which will basically pair up with your iPhone. It uses the iPhone's cameras to monitor the TV, and it uses the proximity sensors in the TV, just to kind of record your TV and really match up the absolute perfect colors for your TV, so that way you don't have to do all the manual configuration. It'll be interesting to see this in practice, and me, as somebody who just doesn't really get the color calibration a lot of the time, be a massive win. The new Apple TV will be starting from $179, and again, that will be going on pre-order from the 30th of April and coming in the second half of May. To the next bit of hardware, and that is the new iMac, which kind of has been leaked to death at this point. Now, something very interesting that Tim Cook said when he was presenting this was that they had a two-year transition window. And correct me if I'm wrong, I've probably missed it at some point, but they always said they were going to be transitioning to the M1 and Apple Silicon processors over a period of years, but they've never given a definitive timeline. So two years is very interesting, considering that we're almost a whole year into it. So it's probably not going to be too far off before we see the rest of the Mac lineup transition across onto Apple Silicon. But moving on, iMac, what's it all about and what's new? Well, first up, they finally redesigned the thing. We no longer have the big chonky bezels. And we now get a really streamlined 24 inch thin iMac. It does come in up to seven different colors, and these are probably not gonna be everybody's tastes, but hey, if color is your jam, then Apple have it in spades. Personally for me, I'm not a massive fan of all the different colors, but if you are, then there's gonna be something for pretty much everybody out there. They use a more subtle color on the front and then a more bright and vivid color on the back just to show off and really celebrate the color of the iMac that you choose. Inside is obviously rocking the M1 processor and it comes with two fans on this model. They'll probably barely ever ramp up and it'll mostly stay very, very silent. So great again if you're somebody who just values that all-in-one device that's not gonna make much noise. Up top, we also have a new revamped 1080p webcam, which is gonna make things so much better. Paired up with the M1 processor and its image processing unit, things are gonna look sharp, they're gonna look crisp, and it's definitely gonna be a big step up over things like the MacBooks and the Macs that we've got already. So can't wait to see that in action. Very much like the rest of the Macs that have been announced within the last 12 months or so, we also get a three mic array, so that way you'll be able to get studio microphone quality, and we now get six different speakers on there as well, so you're gonna get absolutely stellar performance that supports Dolby Atmos. This thing is gonna be something that's apparently a room-filling sound experience, so I guess we'll see how that performs. Interestingly, on the back, we've now got four USB-C ports. Two of those are Thunderbolt. But where it really gets interesting is the power connector. So they've brought back a MagSafe type power connector that magnetically connects to the back of the device. But within the power brick, it also has an ethernet port as well. So that way you don't need to kind of get a separate dock or anything like that. Looks pretty nifty and it's probably a very good use of space. So I like the look of that and it'll be interesting to see how that performs. With regards to the accessories available for this thing, you can obviously color match your keyboard, your Magic Keyboard or your Magic Trackpad as well. But where things get really interesting is Apple have announced a new Magic Keyboard that you can get with this that supports Touch ID as well. So if you want to bring Touch ID to your brand new iMac, you're going to be able to have that. Now, one of the killer features of Touch ID with the iMac is it supports profile switching. So for example, here I could basically log in using my finger and it takes me straight into my iMac profile. Then Liam could come along tap on the uh, Touch ID and I'll switch across to his. That for me is absolutely massive, just to be able to quickly profile switch on the fly without too much hassle. There is also one that supports a numerical keypad as well, so if you are into having that number pad, you'll be able to get it on the new Magic Keyboard. Prices start at $12.99 and you'll be able to pre-order from April 30th. The device itself will actually start shipping in the second half of May, pretty much like every other piece of Apple hardware that's been announced today. Now where things get really interesting is the brand new iPad Pro. Now we all expected to see a new revamped A14 processor, but no, we're getting the M1 processor thrown into the iPad Pros this time around, which is really exciting. It means that all of those devices are pretty much aligned when it comes to the silicon, and hopefully that means we're gonna start seeing more and more applications kind of transition across back and forth to them, and hopefully in the future, it means we might start seeing some pro iPad apps. Now, unfortunately, Apple did very much lean on third-party applications. There wasn't too much in the way of their apps coming across. So for those of you holding up for things like Final Cut or Xcode, 
Nope, that wasn't talked about at all this time around. So unfortunately, that's not happening. But M1 processors in there hopefully brings us a step closer to that. Now, the new iPad Pros will support two times faster storage and up to two terabytes as well. So if you're one of those people who absolutely needs a lot of storage packed into your iPad Pro, well, there's going to be an option available to you. So that's really interesting. One thing packed onto the bottom of it is obviously we still keep that USB port. However, it now supports Thunderbolt and USB 4, which means that you can get faster transfer speeds. And it also supports up to 6K output on Apple's Pro XDR display as well. So that just shows how good the bandwidth is on that port. It's not just the ports that got upgraded, the connectivity did as well. And we've got 5G, which comes as no surprise. However, if you are somebody who's obviously been holding up because you want that 5G connectivity just to make your iPad even more future-proof, well, it's here now for you. Just like the iMac, the iPad is also getting improved cameras, but probably the most interesting is the true depth camera on the front. It's now a 12 megapixel ultra wide and it supports something called center stage, which basically will do some kind of magical cropping to follow the user around. So if you're on a video call or if you're shooting a movie, you can move around this place and it will pan the camera just to keep you in center focus. If somebody else then joins the shop, it will then start to focus on them as well. So some pretty cool wizardry there. And that's really kind of got me excited. I can't wait to see what that actually performs like or if it's just going to be a bit of a mess. So I guess we'll see. Probably one of the biggest upgrades is the display. So this now ships with the Liquid Retina XDR, which is basically a mini LED display. It has 10,000 LEDs in there and has a peak brightness of 16,000 nits. So this thing is going to look absolutely stunning. And considering all of the tech they've managed to cram in there, it's still just 6.4 millimeters thick. So that is really crazy impressive. In terms of the Magic Keyboard, we did get a slight change to that, but there's no new features or anything like that. It just now comes in a nifty looking white. So, you know, if you want to change up your colors and have something that gets real dirty real quick, then hey, there's an option available for you. The 11-inch model starts at $799, and the 12.9-inch starts at $1099. So it's only a slight increase on the 12.9-inch, but keeping the 11-inch the same price as well. Of course, you'll be able to pre-order it on April 30th, and it'll start shipping in the second half of May. So all in all, there were some really, really interesting things announced today. There was a lot of exciting stuff. I love the look of the new iMac, just not a massive fan of the colors. However, I really, really am excited by the direction Apple is taking things. The whole kind of silicon stuff is all finally getting aligned. And they showed off things like Divinity Original Sin running on the iPad. And, you know, these are some really stellar games and stuff like that that are running on the device. Can't wait to see what the future's like, and I can't wait to get our hands on something like the AirTags because that's going to be great fun. Also, the new Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, definitely want to take that out for a spin and see how it performs. So watch this space, make sure you hit subscribe, and we'll be back in the future with some more awesome videos. In the meantime, let us know in the comments what's your favorite thing that Apple announced today. Are you excited about the different things they've got coming, or are you disappointed that we didn't get a games console type thing, or they didn't bring out the larger iMacs as well? Pop those things down in the comments and we can discuss them there. But in the meantime, stay safe and we'll be back soon. Bye.